Hello everyone and welcome to a quick tutorial, probably 30 seconds or so, on the changes to version 2.281 which has just gone online. Here I have a gear on my fourth axis screen um, and on both the workbench and the fourth axis you now have a um, perspective view so that you can select which angle that you're going to look at something from. The change that you need to be aware of is we now have slit saws. Under tool type you can now define a uh, an item as a slit saw. I'm going to select one that I already have set up. There are only two numbers that are important when setting up one of these uh, saw blades. The first is diameter. Uh, set that for the actual diameter of the saw. The next one is the thickness of that saw blade and that is under flute length. You have to think of these saws as being defined as very very short mills. So it's a uh, 25 millimeter in this one, half a millimeter thick um, and if I select it, you'll see that the screen reconfigures itself to show uh, this saw on your uh, on your rig. Now, if we want to do something like a rooting, you'll see if we start the simulation, it works just exactly like um, like a flute would, uh, only on its side and built for the slit. And if we turn it you can see that's actually moving back and forth doing its job. Now if you were to um, use tangential shaving I suspect you would need a uh, slit saw that has some sort of abrasion, abrasive material on it. Uh, I'm no expert in that field so I'll leave that up to you. Anyway that's the first big change is that you can use slit saws if you wish. Uh, as in any G-code please run it in the air first. Um, it's very critical in all this that you don't damage your equipment, that you know everything is moving in the correct directions when you go to do what you're, whatever you're going to do. The second change that you need to be aware of is that I've added uh, pendulums. So if we go to the tools and under indicators you'll now find you'll, that there is a pendulum spot. There's only one basic pendulum that's been added so far. Uh, for those of you that know the secrets of actually drawing your own indicators and spokes you'll find that you can also draw your own pendulums. Uh, they're in the indicators folder. They start with a capital P minus. Anything with a capital P minus uh, will be considered a pendulum. Uh, so let's add a pendulum. Um, I'm going to add this to a uh, grasshopper we have on the screen. And what you would do is pick the shaft uh, at the central part, decide whether it's going to be in front or back. I'm going to put it in front for the heck of it here. And if we simulate, you'll find it's now running. Now, this is a perfect example for me to show you one other control that many of you uh, probably aren't aware of what it does. You'll see that my pendulum is not centered on this uh, at all. It's swinging back and forth from about zero back. So I'm going to stop the simulation just so you can see how I'm doing this. If I select the pendulum, there's two little buttons down here, rotation adjust, and we can move that pendulum back and forth on its shaft without affecting anything else until we find that we have it uh, straightened up. And it still needs to go a little bit more forward, I guess and there we have a properly swinging pendulum. Now the pendulum does get stretched to scale so if you're going to design your own you should design one close to the size you want it so that the bob at the bottom doesn't get stretched. Um, there is one other trick that I think I should show you that has to deal with pendulums. Uh, to do that I'm going to add a Celtic knot to the screen. Uh, we'll just go to Celtic knots here. Okay, I've added this Celtic knot to the screen. Now, uh, Celtic knots, photographs, and other STLs that you load uh, through the slicer can all be sent to the screen. And in order to move them around the screen, you select them and select this Move Engrave Object uh, button that's down on the properties. If you do that, whenever you push the button, moving the mouse will now move the object. So I'm going to move this object uh, right on top of my pendulum bob. And now if I look at the screen from the side, we can also hit Move Engrave Object again and you can move that object uh, around the screen on the side. And by moving it exactly to the point that you want it to be, you can actually center it right on top of a pendulum and maybe even sink it into the pendulum a little bit. Okay, Then we can go back to the forward view. Uh, now pendulums, like every other object, can have a linkage. So I'm going to select the pendulum and I'm going to say create link down here, add linkage. And when you do that it comes up and asks you if you want to use the Celtic knot because it notices that nothing else on the screen is unlinked. Things can only be linked uh, or driven by one object. So I'm going to say that I want the pendulum to drive the Celtic knot. 
and here we have it. Now you'll notice that the Celtic knot just turned to a proper angle to the pendulum, so that now if we uh, turn on our simulation, you can see that our Celtic knot is actually sl swinging with the pendulum. And soon you'll be able to do the same thing with STL objects uh, that you'll be able to load into the screen as soon as I have some routines done so that we can uh, uh, machine such objects. Photographs can also be placed on the screen. As you can see here, I've got a little photograph added to the pendulum as well. So you can add almost anything you want as a displayable object. And of course, we can't yet engrave photographs either, but that is coming, and that's why you can... Uh, place them on the screen and such. So those are the only two big changes with this version. Of course, various bugs have been fixed, so let me know how you make out and uh, have fun.